Can systems engineering be made agile? Well, duh. But how? That's the question my new book, Agile Model-Based Systems Engineering Cookbook, addresses. Hi, I'm Bruce Douglas, one of the contributors to the UL standard and the SysML standard. I have decades of experience in real-time, embedded, safety-critical, high-reliability systems and software development. I've consulted to literally hundreds of projects. I'm formerly the IBM Chief Evangelist, and I'm currently the Senior Principal Agile Systems Engineer of the MITRE Corporation. I'm the author of about 20 books on real-time embedded software development systems engineering, including the aforementioned Agile Systems Engineering Cookbook. This book has five main chapters. The first chapter is the basics of agile modeling, where we talk about how to do agile planning, managing backlog, iteration plan, release plan, uh, estimating effort uh, for systems, um, work on prioritization, iteration zero, and a topic called architecture zero. We identify the initial architecture from which you will work and iterate, and also how to organize your models. Chapter two talks about system specification. We focus on use cases, user stories, requirements definition, and functional analysis, including the different ways that we can do functional analysis based on scenarios, activity modeling, state machines, and user stories. And then we talk about model safety analysis and security analysis. And also creating logical data schemas, which are an important part of modeling because you have to understand the meaning of the information, the meaning of the data, how it's represented, and what its various properties are. In chapter three, we talk about development of system architectures, including architectural principles, emerging use case analysis, something we'll talk about a bit more in just a second, pattern-based architecture, allocation of system properties into an architecture, and creating subsystem level interfaces. In the next chapter, we talk about they hand off to downstream engineering. This is something I get a lot of questions about from my consulting customers. So we do the system engineering model. How do I effectively hand it down, not just to software developers, but also mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, you know, hydraulics, mechanics, and other kinds of engineering facets. This chapter talks about how we refine the logical interfaces done in the system engineering model into physical interfaces that the downstream engineering teams need to use and create. How do you create what's called the deployment architecture? The allocation responsibilities of different engineering disciplines called engineering facets, such as software, electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, mechanics, and so on. How do we create and federate these set of models to work together into a larger scale organization? And how to allocate responsibilities into those engineering facets? And the fifth chapter talks about the demonstration of need. How do we demonstrate that the models we create, the systems we're creating, are going to meet the ultimate need? How do we verify that they're correct? And we do this through a number of means, such as model simulation, model-based testing, uh, execution of computable constraint model, allocation of alternatives, traceability, doing effective walkthroughs, and test-driven modeling. So this book talks about all of that, provides workflows, little recipes for achieving those goals. So let's look at one of the questions that commonly comes up. How do I merge information done from different use case analyses into an architectural model? So this is done in the, in the IBM tool Rhapsody, where we've created blocks for the use cases that have different properties. These properties include flow properties, values of flow between the actors and the use case or system in question, value properties, which are part of our data schema model, how do we represent information that's crucially important to the containment of those use case capabilities, services, which we model here as event receptions or signal receptions, and system functions, which are different behaviors that we expect the system to uh, execute is a part of the use case model. Now, as we do the functional analysis, we identify all of these kinds of properties in various use cases. And here we see a system 
uh, block, which is empty. We haven't allocated anything yet. We haven't merged anything yet. And we've got use cases for uh, in, for this particular system, uh, emulate basic gearing, uh, control and resistance, uh, emulate front and rear gearing, and measuring performance metrics. So when we do a merge, we are merging the elements. So there are five cases we need to consider. A semantic feature, a property, may be unique to one use case and is not used anywhere else. Or it can be used in more than one use case and appears in exactly the same form. In that case, merging is pretty easy. You just copy that property to the system block and you're done. The other cases are not so simple. Feature might appear in multiple use cases, but different in form. For example, the name of the system function or the event reception may be different because different people did that use case analysis. But the end, we still have to identify those are the same features. Might have different parameter lists. That's the fourth one. Uh, so it might have different parameter lists. And so we identify, you know, in this case, we, this use case needed these features. In this case, it needed some other features. How do we merge those together into a singular capability or system function? Sometimes it happens that we have the different features identified and they're the same name, but they're really in, intended to be different features. So we have to identify that case as well. They're called the same thing, but they're meant to be semantically different things. So those are five cases we need to consider when we do an architectural merge. So given these use cases we just looked at just a second ago, how would we merge it into a system architecture such as this? In this particular system, the example we use in the book, is the Pegasus Smart Bike Trainer. And we see that there are a number of subsystems here, such as the mechanical frame, which includes the ability to incline the system up and down. There's electrical power delivery from the wall power. There's a powertrain system, which includes a drivetrain, pedal assembly, and a motor assembly to, to provide resistance. There's a comm subsystem for communicating uh, be between the system and uh, applications which gather and analyze the data um, from different devices you might have connected with uh, Bluetooth or with Ant or Ant Plus uh, communications. There's a writer interaction subsystem which provides the interaction with the writer to the system, providing things like uh, gear control, uh, incline control. And there's a main computing platform subsystem which manages all the information of various rides, measure performance data, performs computations, um, and has con system configuration information. So how do we merge those properties identified in system use cases into such an architecture? Now, the connected architecture shown here on an in internal block diagram shows how these systems connect. The green highlighted systems are the power uh, distribution system. And the other connectors are done over some internal bus, in this case, a CAN bus. So how do we distribute that functionality across those systems uh, to create an allocation of the system properties into the architecture? By following the recipe, we'll, we'll come up with a first cut allocation where these different subsystems then have um, system functions, uh, event receptions, value properties, and flow properties, which model them. And this book talks about how. It talks about a number of other recipes. There are dozens of recipes in this book that describe how to perform the various functionality which you do in system engineering in a model-based and agile means. I hope you find this video useful, and I hope to see your comments on the book. Thank you very much.